What's up ladies and gentlemen, Universal Mastery. Welcome back to my channel. Um, what I do here is I break down the occult sciences to a very practical level so that you can apply them in your day-to-day -day life and see real results around you from just listening to this content, okay? My name is Jeremiah James Schwartz. I am fully initiated in Kabbalah, um, being the top of the tree and the bottom. Uh, I'm studied when it comes to tarot, and I'm also studied when it comes to astrology and planetary energies. I am a professional occultist, and the reason why I'm mentioning this is so that you understand who you're getting this information from first and foremost, because that is very important. You want to know if you're getting your information from someone who's actually a practitioner, someone who's actually getting results with what they're talking about, okay? So what we're going to do in today's video is we are doing a weekly... Um, a weekly series, which is um, pick a card, and this is going to be your weekly tarot card reading in a very simplified format, very quick, but yet very detailed and effective. So if you want to know what energies to expect, what archetypal energies to expect going into this week coming up, I have the dates titled in the, uh, in the title of this video, um, then definitely stay tuned for the rest of the video. Okay, so we're going right into it. So first thing that I like to do is I like to just give people an understanding of how I do my reading. I do three cards. What I do is I shuffle the deck 22 times to link it to the Kabbalah and all the 22 pathways that exist on the Kabbalistic tree. And then what happens is while I'm shuffling, I have you pick a number from one, two, or three. Okay, so you pick one of these numbers, you got to really go within, feel it out, pick the number that's calling to you, and then that is going to link you to the reading, and then intuitively, I'm going to tap into my spirit, and I'm going to get a three-digit number that comes to the top of my head, and then I'm going to draw the cards according to that three-digit number, um, which is going to link me to you, whoever it is that is getting the reading. Okay, so let's go right into it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shuffle the deck 22 times right now. So go ahead and pick your number, whether it's a one, a two, or a three. Okay? Okay, so while I was shuffling, I also got the three-digit number that I'm going to pick to draw the cards. So by this point, you should have your number, whether it is a one, a two, or a three. Okay, lock that in for yourself. Okay, so the number that came to me while I was shuffling um, is 632. So what I'm going to do is I go six cards down. One, two, three, four, five. This is the first one. I put these cards to the side. This is for my number ones. 30, so then I go 1, 2, this is the third card, put these to the side, this is for my number 2's, and then 2, 1, 2, put this card to the side, this is for my number 3's, I got them all lined up on the ground so they're in order, deck is going to the side, and first thing that I'd like to say is if you would like to book your own personal reading with me and figure out where you're at in your own spiritual evolution, definitely check out the link in the description below that's where you're going to be able to book that okay so other than that let's go right into it so i'm going to start with the number ones and i am pulling your card right now Okay, very fascinating. Very, 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 very fascinating. And what a great poll to have. Okay, so this is the card that you picked for my number one. So I'm going to zoom in so you can see it. It is the temperance card. Okay. 
And the reason why I say this is fascinating is because just last week's reading for the number threes, this is the card that they got. So the temperance card, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to describe the symbolism that I'm seeing on the card. And what I want you to do if you pick number one is I want you to be relating this to yourself. Okay, so I'm going to describe all the symbolism that I'm seeing um, from this card and then I'm going to start unpacking all of the meaning behind it. Okay, so here we go. So I'm seeing a lady with long golden blonde hair. She has these major massive wings attached to her. Um, on the left wing, it is a little darker, and then on the right wing, it's a little bit lighter. Like there's a shadow that's being cast on the wing on the left. Um, on her stomach, there is this vortex. There is literally a vortex, a spiral of energy, okay, that is painted on her. Behind her back, you can tell she has two weapons, literally on each shoulder, two big weapons, like massive swords is what it seems to be. Um, in the background, you see a yellow gold. Towards the bottom of the card, it's darker. And it looks to be like there's some brush, some very tall grass blades, and it just gets darker. But as you get higher up on the card, it gets brighter and golder. More golden, I should say. And then in her hand, she's holding two heads. Not real human heads, but they look to be made out of stone or some sort of metal, and in her left hand, she's using one of the heads and pouring it out as if it's like a tea kettle, and there seems to be either red wine or blood, I like to say blood, that is coming out of the mouth of this head that she's tilting downwards into her right hand, which is holding another head that has the top dome part missing, in the form of a chalice. So it's like filling the, the head up with this blood, with this liquid, okay? So the zodiac sign attributed to this card is Sagittarius. And the Hebrew letter, just to make sure I get it right, let me check. The Hebrew letter is Semek. Now let's find where Semek is. Semek means support, okay? That is what Semek means. And it stands for the Hebrew letter S. Okay, so I'm going to explain what this card means. So this is always a great card to pull, okay? And I'll tell you why. This has everything to do with your higher self, is what it's often called, or some people call it their daemon. That's what I call it. Um, I think that's a more balanced way to call your spirit, and it's one of its uh, most potent forms, because the day mon stands for day moon, which is balanced. It's light and it's dark. Um, so this is a signification of the daemon, and the ability to connect with it. This is the ability to have a conscious understanding that your own personal spirit is guiding you and able to help you do things that establish a stronger connection to it. So this is showing signs on one end that your daemon is helping you on your journey and within this week um, to come and maybe right now, you're experiencing certain circumstances or situations that are showing you that you are being guided by your own spirit. Like there is support behind you. There's something behind you. And I want you to understand that that support is coming from your own spirit. So this is one thing a lot of people forget. A lot of people want to talk about all these other spiritual forces and this, you know, there's this spirit, which is powerful. There's that spirit that's powerful. And yes, there are spirits that are powerful, 110%. But the reality is, is you are your own individualized personal spirit, and the entire process of spiritual, especially occult evolution, is developing that own spirit of yourself and taking on the powers of all these external and other spirits so that you become your own most powerful being in your own right. So this is, once again, this could be showing signs maybe within this week that you're going to start becoming more aware that your own spirit is what is so powerful and what has the potential to literally become your own, um, you could say, you could say your own God in your own right, an aspect of source, which is very powerful and important. Um, so there's another symbolism between the hands 
um, you know, using the heads, one's pouring the blood into the top of the crown of the other one, um, the left hand is the one that's pouring the head that has the blood coming out. The left stands for the feminine. That's the receptive side of the body. Even when it comes to Kabbalah, it's the left pillar, which is the dark pillar. So that signifies the darker side of your spirit, okay? Um, the daemon in its totality is coming from um, dark matter energy, okay? And this is just a fact. It's, it comes from the, the abyss. It comes from where source is located and source is way beyond the physical plane structures that are here and built in on earth. So what I'm basically trying to say is that everyone likes to talk about light, I'm this light being and all this stuff, but people forget that darkness creates light. There is literally light that can create uh, itself from darkness. Dark matter energy can literally produce light. And that is actually the most effective and a potent form of light itself. So the daemon, your own personal spirit, is coming from this place of, you could say, a lot of inorganic energy, which is dark matter energy, but is inhabiting a physical body, which is you, which is a partly organic being that can that can see light and can produce light so there's a balance that's going on there so as i said in the left hand there's the head that's pouring the blood into the right hand where the cup is filling up so it's showing that the daemon your own spirit is going to be giving you the wisdom the knowledge to fill you up in your mind with the understandings and the wisdom and the knowledge that you need to fully access your highest potential and that's what that's symbolizing. Now, you see on the, you know, on this card that this uh, this lady has wings. That's that's a symbol of power. It's a symbol of astral travel. It's a symbol of the daemon, the, your own divine intelligence. Um, this is your astral self. And remember, the whole process of spiritual self development is to build your daemon. Okay, because when you first start your spiritual evolutionary journey, you're not gonna straight off the bat, imagine yourself as this powerful being that has wings and, you know, carries weapons and has all these trinkets or whatever it may be. You're, you're just getting started to be able to tap into the astral. And then you're able to start to tap into your astral double, which it all starts with just seeing yourself normally in the astral plane. And then as you get more advanced, you start adding things to yourself because you're connecting with certain astral entities that if you know if you're doing it properly if you know what you're doing you're able to take their powers and then you develop their skill sets you develop their energetic currents their power and then you start to be able to add that to your astral self which then within time forms the daemon okay um which is a very strong aspect of your astral self that can cause physical change here on earth if you know how to move your daemon in the astral planes and other dimensions as well. It gets very deep. I'm just scratching the surface. But this is what that's representing, okay? Um, there's weapons on her back signifies that she's she's not afraid to go to war. Um, you know, she's ready for whatever. She's ready to be ruthless when it needs to be. And she conquers your enemies for you. So your daemon is the intelligence within you that tells you when you have enemies, when there are people trying to stop you on your evolutionary path, you need to handle that. And I'm not talking about physically, I'm talking about with your intent, with your mind, with controlling your emotions and recognizing, I don't like that person. I, I am aware of what they're doing to me. I'm gonna make sure that they see, you could say, see their downfall. You know, this is being, uh, this is being defensive and offensive with your psychic capabilities, which is very essential to help you evolve on your journey. This is once again one of those topics that's very missed in the new age realm where everyone's like, love light, just love everybody and it'll erase your enemies. That's not true. All you do when you do that is feed chaos. So the daemon, in order to fully access it, means you have to physically understand that there are going to be people on your journey that you need to handle and that you need to confront and that you need to be aware of so that they don't take advantage of you and you don't allow yourself to be taken advantage of. You know, you got to defend and be offensive at times. Okay, so that's what that represents. 
There is a vortex on our stomach. The vortex signifies dragon energies, which are directly connected to earth energies, which are very powerful. Earth energies control the physical plane. You know, the, the entire earth itself is that you can think of it like a big ley line system. So the daemon is directly connected to earth energies, okay? When you gain a conscious connection to your daemon, which exists in the subconscious and unconscious, you become very powerful. And it's not easy to do this. So for my number ones, you're definitely going to be experiencing, some, quite frankly, some new spiritual understandings within this week and very powerful transformation. So this is a very good card. Okay, once again, this is um, the zodiac sign that's ruled by this card is Sag Sagittarius. Um, I'm not going to break down Sagittarius. The best thing that you can do is search up a YouTube video right after this in regards to what are the energies of Sagittarius and just do some research on that because these energies are also going to be affecting you um, pretty heavily as well. Okay, so in regards to Kabbalah, the path for the temperance is going to be right here. So this is the path going right from Yesod, which is the mass collective, connecting right into Tifereth. Okay, right up into Tifereth. Yep. And this is the this is literally where you awaken your daemon in regards to initiation. If you're doing it properly, you would start at Malkuth, you come up, you go to Hod, uh, Nedzak then Tifereth, and then here you literally build a conscious connection with your daemon. But um, there's a whole process to that, and to do it the most effective way would not be through traditional um, Sephirothic initiation. You would actually want to step into the Cliffothic realms as a vampire, a person who exists in Universe B, to then go down to the Cliffothic Tifereth, which is Thagirion. Um, and that's where you really develop the daemon, okay? And there's a whole process to doing that, which I will be discussing on my Patreon within time. Um, so yeah, so that's your card. Other than that, I'm going to leave it there for my number ones. If you felt like this reading was accurate, then go ahead and drop down in the comments, okay? Now, let's move on to number twos. Okay, number twos, I'm going to pick your card right now. Okay, so for my number twos, you just picked, I'm going to zoom in, you just picked the Eight of Cups. Okay, let you look at that for a second. All right, so now I'm going to break this down. I'm first going to explain what I'm seeing on the card, and then I'm going to start unpacking it. Okay, so here we go. For my number twos, what I see on this Eight of Cups card is I see eight cups that are formed in a circle, all pointing outwards. Within the middle, there is this baby that literally has angel wings or wings, a part of it. All these cups are sitting over water. And it looks like in the middle where the baby is located, it almost looks like a fountain as if you were looking at the fountain from a bird's eye view, like looking straight down at it from the sky, this is what it would look like. It looks like a fountain with these big cups around it. And then around the cups, there's just water everywhere. It's like on a lake. Um, I'm seeing two flowers that are sprouting, one going up and one going down. And then there's a few stray leaves that are in the water as well. Okay. The planet that rules this card is Jupiter. And the zodiac sign is Pisces, okay? So now let me start unpacking this for my number two. So what this is representing, first of all, is I want to break down cups, okay? Cups represents emotions. It can represent the feminine energy, the feminine current being receptive, the ebbs and the flows, the ups and the downs. 
It can represent chaos because feminine energy in its totality is chaos. Um, but also at the same time, there's all potential within chaos. You know, there's a lot of potency in chaos, but you want to be balanced and be the observer of it so that you can gain that value. Okay, so there's eight of these cups and the eight is the number literally of chaos. Eight is the number of chaos. If you look up the sigil of chaos, you'll see there is eight points on the sigil. Um, it is literally the number of chaos. But also, if you take the eight, turn it sideways, that's also infinity. And from my research, if you study the uh, solar system in regards to all the different ages, going from the dark age to the bronze age to the silver age to the gold age, the way that the there's two suns in our solar system you could think of. There's a, a dark sun and there's a, a regular sun. And they move in the formation of the eight in different locations. So one's going like, one's coming like this, I'll show you. So one's here, one's here. You can say this is the dark sun, this is the um, regular sun. One's going like this, and then the other one's coming underneath in the form of the eight. And eventually, they're gonna get really close, almost touch, and then they're gonna go back in the eight formation going away from each other. So this is how evolution has always happened in regards to the big scheme of things and how we're affected here on Earth, um, moving closer into the Golden Age. So eight is also the number of evolution, but it is also the number of chaos. Now within these cups, you see the baby that is being like very newborn, like very newborn baby, like literally just coming out of the womb kind of baby but it has wings on it, which is a symbol of power, which is a symbol of something that's awakening within. Something's being born, okay? So what this is representing is this is representing that for my number twos, within this week to come, you're gonna be going through situations that are chaotic, emotionally, there's gonna be a lot, there's gonna be a lot of expansion there may be good fortune that comes from this chaos. But the main idea that you want to know is that this chaos is forming something within yourself. So for my number two is this is going to help bring something to life within you. This, this week to come is going to bring a connection within you that is literally going to help you move forward on your path in a much deeper way, a very spiritual way. There is this being, which is your own spirit, your own daemon, your own divine intelligence, that is literally beginning to be awakened within you. It's, be, it's, it's being born. And it's forming, though, from these chaotic scenarios and these chaotic situations that you're going through that are challenging you on an emotional level, but it seems to be that within this week to come, you are going to be very well versed in regards to these challenges and in regards to what to expect, meaning you're going to be ready for it, you're going to be aware of it, and you're going to fully allow it to completely transform you the way it needs to happen so that you can awaken this being within yourself that is going to be very valuable on your journey. Okay, so we see the two flowers that are sprouting. One's going upwards and one's going downwards. This is the symbol of as above, so below. This is signifying that there are going to be dark things that you're going to go through that are going to transform you in dark ways that are going to be valuable. And the same thing is going to happen in a light aspect, a lighter aspect. And what I mean by that is there's going to be other things that are going to, you know, be very you could almost say attractive. There's going to be things that you like that are going to be like, yes, I like this. And there's also going to be value that sprouts from that as well. It's the, it's once again, the dark and the light, the bottom and the top. Um, and there definitely is a big emotional, um, current to this card. So there, this is definitely going to be influencing your emotions. This is, this is going to be an emotional thing that's going to allow this sprouting to occur, this rebirth, this inner awakening to occur. Now it's ruled by Jupiter, okay? Jupiter is expansion. Jupiter can mean good fortune. Um, Jupiter can also mean traveling. 
Um, Jupiter, what else can Jupiter mean? It's, it's one of the planets that is one of the better planets. Like people like Jupiter. Jupiter means good things. If you think of a number for Jupiter, it's 12. Jupiter means, once again, it's, it's like having good luck. It's expansion. Things are growing. Um, it's making things bigger that are working out. Um, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much where I'll leave it with Jupiter. So these are energies that are going to be influencing this reawakening within yourself. So this is a very beneficial thing. Now the Zodiac sign is Pisces and Pisces has everything to do with the emotions once again. So not only is this card heavily emotional in regards to all it being the cups and then in regards to the cups being on top of water and then the baby being inside of what looks to be like a fountain. It's also ruled by Pisces. So this transformation is extremely emotional. You're going to be experiencing emotions that may be chaotic within this week to come. But once again, this is also showing signs that you're well versed to be able to observe these emotions and to be able to process them. And although it may feel a little bit uncomfortable or whatever it may be, you're going to get a lot of value out of this experience because this is really going to awaken something within. So that's where this card is, uh, is leading you. So that's it. That's your, that's your card number two. So other than that, I'm going to leave it there. If you felt like this reading was accurate, please drop down in the comments below and let me know. Okay. For my number threes, we are going to pick your card right now. Okay, so number threes, you just picked the three of cups. I'm going to zoom in so you can see that. Okay, and there. Okay, so this is interesting. So first thing I'm going to do for my number threes is I'm going to break down the visualization of this card. Okay, so what I'm seeing and I want you to be connecting this back to yourself, okay? So be relating this to yourself. So what I'm seeing is three baby angels, all have golden hair, all have halos, all have wings, okay? And they're all robed in white. Now, the bottom one is holding up a cup, and then the two above him are holding cups as well, but pouring it in to the baby angel that's at the very bottom, filling up the cup. And this cup that this baby angel is holding at the bottom is sprouting a flower that's rising up. And I am seeing that there is a symbol in the background. There is a triangle. Um, the card is ruled by the planet Mercury. And the zodiac sign attributed to this card is Cancer. Okay? So now let me start unpacking this. Okay, so what this card is representing for my number threes, what you're going to be expecting within this week. This card signifies high levels of compatibility with somebody else or something else that is allowing you to develop yourself on a spiritual level. And what I mean by that is when it comes to your own personal spirit, you may find yourself getting in certain situations of compatibility with somebody else that are going to help you feed your own personal spirit, that are going to help you feed your own personal evolution, and also helping your partner or the person that you're being compatible with at the same time. There is a partnership within this card that is feeding something on a deep level. Okay, It's feeding something, most likely your own personal spirit on a deep level through this compatibility that you're having with somebody else. So you may find yourself, for my number threes, within this week, you're going to meet somebody, whoever that is, whether it's a relationship, whether it's just somebody that you're, you meet for the first time, like a cool friend, whatever it is, a mentor, I don't know. It could manifest in any way, 
but you're going to meet somebody or something at least. There's going to be something that is going to be working with you to help you develop your own spirit. This is what this card is representing. Um, and in the background, you see a triangle and they're in the triangle and three, the number three can also stand for the supernal triad in regards to Kabbalah. So if we look at the tree, we have the supernal triad, Keter, Chokma Bina, and as you see, it's a triangle. These are the highest spheres on the tree. And then we have the three angels representing the supernal triad, and they're in the triangle, which is once again, the supernal triad, the supernal triad. And for these three spheres, what they stand for is Keter is crown. This is where source comes through, the source energy. Um, then you have Chokma, which stands for wisdom. It's a, like a masculine energy, a wisdom. Um, and then you have Bina, which is understanding, feminine, very dark and feminine. And all three of these spheres are formless, meaning they're not... These are higher spheres. These are things that require an ability to understand letting go, an ability to let go of the human form and be formless and to just understand higher levels of, once again, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. So this card is directly connecting back to the supernal triad in regards to whatever this compatibility that you're having with this other person or whatever it is that you're having compatibility with or whatever it is that you're working with this is helping you to develop your knowledge. This is helping you to develop your wisdom and your understanding because it's connecting and pulling from these supernal triad energies. Um, so this is a very powerful card to get. So that's great. Now the planet that is representing this card is Mercury. So Mercury has to do with analytical thinking. Mercury has to do with knowing what's going on and being able to figure things out and put pieces together, putting pieces to the puzzle together. So this is also representing that you're going to gain an awareness of the value of this compatibility that is going to come into your life within this week. And you're going to be able to take advantage of it because of these energies that are coming from Mercury, because they're going to give you that ability to see what's going on so that you can fully capitalize on it. Okay. And then we have the zodiac sign, which is cancer. Um, and the best thing that I can say for that is definitely make sure you go on YouTube and you search up an astrologer and break and see, uh, search up what are the energies of cancer, because that's going to give you a very full explanation of what exactly, um, cancer represents. And those can, those cancer energies are definitely going to influence you. Um, for my number threes this week. So that will be very beneficial for you to understand. But even the sign of cancer shows as above, so below. It's like the six sideways and then the other six going right below it. So this is representing like, once again, like whatever you're going to be doing within this partnership that's going to come across your path, there is going to be an empowerment of your spirit that is going to come from that. So this is very valuable and you want to make sure you take advantage of that and, you know, not be shelled, but be open to compatibility. Even if it makes you uncomfortable for, if it feels, if there's anxiety there or fear there, you want to go into that. You want to lean into that because this is going to help you evolve in a very profound way. Okay. Because we have the flower that's coming out of this bottom angels cup which is signifying fruitation and growth, okay? So other than that, that's going to wrap this card up. Um, for my number threes, if you feel like this was accurate, please drop down in the comments below and let me know. Um, and other than that, I'm going to wrap it up here. So I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day or night, wherever you are. Um, and what I do want to say, though, before I end it, is definitely make sure you go into my description and check out the second link below. Right there, what you're gonna be able to do is you're gonna be able to book your own personal tarot card reading with me where I pull three cards for you, present, near future, long-term future, and what I'm able to do is figure out exactly where you're located at in your own spiritual evolutionary journey um, in a very profound way, breaking it all the way down and the way I do the reading is I do the reading on my own time. So you book the appointment from the second link below that says square appointments. You set the date for and you set the date and time that you want to book. I do the reading on my own time. 
and then I see the time that you're scheduled to get your reading, so I make sure I send the videos over by the time, but what I do, once again, is I do the reading on my own time. When I'm finished, I record the reading breakdown on my phone with every card, so I do a whole video for the first card, whole video for the second, whole video for the third, and then I send that over to you once it's finished on the time that you scheduled your reading, uh, so that you can get get the information on time, um, and that's how I do the reading. I send it to you, your own personalized video reading, um, and the only thing that I request from it is your own personal feedback because I am growing my testimonies as we speak. Okay, so that's where you're gonna be able to book those readings. Second link below. Um, it costs forty dollars. Okay. Um, next thing I want to say is definitely check out the Patreon. If you want to gain access to exclusive content that is not on my YouTube channel, um, for example, I have content on there that is in regards to occult practices where I perform them on camera and then I teach you how to do them yourself. For example, I have a video on how to do an invocation, which is where you are channeling a spirit into your um, energy field and you are taking on that spirit's power which increases your psychic power, increases your psychic capabilities, and increases your psychic protection. And obviously there is a technique and there is a process to being able to do this correctly and making sure that you have it work for yourself. And that's exactly what I break down on the video. Once again, I do it myself and then I show you how to do it. Um, so that's there. And then the other bit of the videos on the Patreon are in regards to Kabbalah. I literally break down every sphere on the tree when it comes to the Sephiroth and the Klipoth so that you have a full understanding of what exactly this Kabbalistic system is um, in its you know true form. Um, and what I do for the spheres is I break down the symbolism, the attributions, and the spirits that rule the spheres. And then what I do is I break down my own experience having initiated through the spheres myself so that you fully understand what it's all about, okay? Even from an initiatory perspective. Um, and it is a very powerful initiatory system, but once again, you wanna make sure you know what you're doing. Um, and also on my Patreon, you're able to communicate with me whenever you want, so you, you know I can help you go down the right direction because there is a lot of booby traps within the system and you do not wanna just go into it blindly, okay? Um, so once again, that's going to be on my Patreon. Where you're going to be able to find the link for the Patreons, the first link in the description. And in order to gain access to the exclusive content, you have to at least be a Tier 2 member or up. In order to be a Tier 2, it literally costs $9.95 a month, and that will come out to less than a dollar a day. So if you do the math, it's 100% worth it, okay? I mean, for the value that is on my Patreon, for less than a dollar a day, that's way too low but once again you know i want to get my patreon out there i want to build up the community so that's why it's you know the price that it is but within time it will go up okay within time i will end up creating my own website and it will go up okay but right now you can get it for very cheap okay so definitely take advantage of that while you can um and as you go up in tiers the benefits increase as well so i'll let you check that out for yourself especially the highest tier Definitely make sure you look at that, it's very valuable. Um, and with that being said, I'd love to give a special shout to the highest tier members already. I have their names message uh, right below the Patreon link in the description. Huge shout to you, ladies and gentlemen. I highly appreciate you and I'm constantly sending you great energy. Good, powerful energy. Not love, light, and all that bullshit, but real, authentic, solid, powerful energy that can help you on your evolution. Um, and then huge shout out to all of my Patreon members in general. I highly appreciate all of you for taking your knowledge to the next level. And then third shout out to all my YouTube subscribers. I appreciate all you for, you know, studying my channel. Okay. So that's where I'm going to leave it. Other than that, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day or night. Um, and I will see you on the next video. Okay. Peace.